Hello laundry friends, I'm going to show you how to take apart the LG WT7300CW top load washing machine to deep clean the outside of the stainless steel wash basket and the inside of the plastic tub. I'll do my best to get all the lingo right, but just know that I'm not a qualified washing machine repair person and opening the machine will likely void any warranty. The video is long, however, I begin by demonstrating the disassembly process and then do it again along with reassembly and close to real time with additional commentary. And that way, if you want to do it step by step with me or you need clarification on a step or two, you can refer to the information section below to jump to that point in the video. Here's a list of the tools and supplies I used. And while you have a look, I recommend that if you have tub odors, detergent buildup or scrud, try running a few consecutive tub clean cycles using a designated washing machine cleaner first. That may solve your issue without having to take apart the washer. Here's a rundown of how to disassemble the washer. With the machine unplugged, water supply turned off, drain hose disconnected, and the hot and cold water supply lines disconnected from the inlet valves, remove the two Phillips head screws in the back of the machine that are located below the control panel. To release the top cover, you want to lift it up from the back, then push forward. Once released, Gently place the cover into its initial position so the two screw holes in the back are lined up as they were. And I stress gently here because there's a wire and the pressure level switches tube that run up into the control panel. Next, form two pieces of wire into the shape of a U and thread one into each of the screw holes and their adjacent holes. In a moment, they're gonna be twisted together to prevent the cover from sliding off the back and stressing out that wire and tube. Carefully lift the front of the top cover, twist those wires to create hinges, Use a bungee cord to prop open the cover. And finally put a piece of painter's tape on the lid to prevent it from falling backwards. Next, remove the tub cover by unclipping the eight clasps that secure it to the outer tub and lift it out. To remove the wash plate cap, you wanna feel around the edges of it with your fingernail. You'll find a slot and insert a flathead screwdriver into that slot and push in while gently prying up. Once you get it started, you can move around the cap with the screwdriver and gently pry out the other clips that hold it in. With a 10 millimeter socket wrench, remove the wash plate mounting screw and make sure to get the toothed countersink locking washer and O-ring which are underneath it. To lift out the wash plate, loop some thin wire into the three holes and then lift straight up. And finally, to get out the stainless steel wash basket, remove the six tub screws with the 10 millimeter socket wrench. Each screw is gonna have a split lock washer and a regular washer on it. Now the basket weighs roughly 25 pounds, so be careful lifting it out. And once it's out, you can clean the exterior of the tub as well as the interior of the plastic tub using the cleaner of your choice. Then reassemble, that's the process. Just be sure to clean the screens inside the hot and cold water inlets, flush the hot and cold supply lines before reconnecting them, balance the machine and run a test cycle before tackling that pile of laundry your family's been accumulating while you've been cleaning the tub. Now I'm gonna show you disassembly again and then reassembly only at a more reasonable pace. Let's get started. First and most importantly, unplug the machine, turn off the water supply, and then with a bucket and some towels handy, remove the drain hose and place it in the bucket. Disconnect the hot and cold water supply lines from the inlet valves and drop those in the bucket as well. Reposition the machine if you don't have access to the back and then remove the two screws below the control panel using a Phillips head screwdriver. The screws have a hex head on them, so a 5 16th nut driver works too. And my Milwaukee 11 in one multi-bit screwdriver has a few nut driver options and that's what I'm using. For the next step, you may need to reposition the machine again. It needs to be somewhere that the top cover can be secured in the upright position. And before I show you how to remove the cover, I'll take a moment and show you how the cover is attached. There's this bar here in the front, and these teeth on the cover go underneath it. In the back right corner, there's a wire and a tube, the tube being part of the water level pressure switch, and they don't have a lot of slack, so don't put too much stress on them. 
Sharp edges, wires, and tubes don't play nicely together. On both sides of the cover is a hole and a slot. This round nub fits into the hole while this bracket slides into or out of the slot. To remove the top cover, grip it from both sides where the control panel meets the cover, lift up, and then push forward. When you lift, don't lift only from the control panel. Make sure the cover is completely released and then place it back down into its initial position. The screw holes in the back should be lined up as they were before, but the sides will be resting on the brackets. Now, because LG didn't put hinges on the cover, I'm going to form two pieces of wire into the shape of a U. I'm using scrap pieces of 14 gauge Romex and thread one piece of wire into each of the screw holes and their adjacent holes. In a moment, they're gonna be twisted together to prevent the cover from sliding off the back and stressing out that wire and tube. I prefer using Romex wire because it's strong pliable and the insulation on the wire prevents scratching the paint, but any strong wire will work as well. At this point, you'll wanna make any final preparations so the top cover can be propped open. Our basement ceiling isn't finished, so I installed a ceiling hook, but if your ceiling is finished, you may need to come up with a way to secure the cover from the back or sides. You could also just get a helper. Here's the process. With the ceiling hook in place, bungee cord and painter's tape on hand, carefully lift the cover, and I mean carefully so it doesn't fall off the back, then twist the inserted wires. Wrap the bungee cord around the cover, Put the painter's tape on the lid so it doesn't fall backwards and hook the bungee cord to the ceiling hook. Now to remove the tub cover and that's done by unclipping the eight clasps that secure it to the outer tub. The clasps snap up and some may be pretty tight. Oh, and definitely put on gloves before working your way around the perimeter of the cover. I found that out the hard way. There are a lot of sharp edges. With the clasps undone, the cover will easily lift off unless you missed a clasp. And there's a thin foam or rubber gasket around the edges of the cover. If it pops out as mine did, just push it back into the slot. Oddly, it doesn't go all the way around. I don't know what that's all about. Now to remove the cap of the wash plate. If you run a fingernail around the outer edge of the cap like this, you'll find a slot. There's only one. Insert a small flathead screwdriver into it and push in while prying it up. It can be a bit tricky, but once the first clip gives a little, you can pry around the outside to release the other clips that hold the cap in place. Once I get it out, I'll give you a closer look. I'll show you the gunk in a moment. So here's the slot you push the screwdriver into, and there are three clips as well as a few pins here on the cap that secure to the wash plate. Okay, back to the gunk. Looks like five years of lint and hairballs, which leads me to believe that removing the wash plate cap periodically to see what's under there may not be a bad idea. And the best part is that it can be done without removing the top cover. And another tip, don't place the screwdriver down on the wash plate like me, it may leave scratches. Next, using a 10 millimeter socket wrench, remove the wash plate mounting screw. Lefty Lucy. <laughs> Do people still say that? Here's a closer look at it. And at first I thought the stuff in the threads was hard water deposits, but it's likely a thread locking material to prevent slippage and corrosion, maybe Loctite. So don't clean off the threads. Below the mounting screw, there will be a toothed countersink lock washer. Be sure to lift that out. And there will also be a small rubber O-ring. If you have a hook tool, it's easier to get out. This is what it looks like when it's all together. Lock washer teeth angled up toward the screw head and then the O-ring. Should you ever need to replace these items, LG refers to them together as the washer customized screw. They actually come with this colored resin in some of the threads. Now to lift out the wash plate, AKA impeller. 
The easiest way to do this is to loop three pieces of thin wire through each of the three holes, twist them together, and pull straight up. There's a groove collar on the underside, uh, like a sprocket, that slides onto the grooved drive shaft at the bottom of the tub. I'm pleasantly surprised at how clean it is under here. <laughs> Not sure what I was expecting to find, though. So at this point, because I'm totally OCD, and I like things to go back exactly as they come out, I mark the tub and inner hub with a pencil. You probably don't need to do this, but if you do, use painter's tape instead of a pencil. A pencil is hard to see and easier to accidentally wipe away. Before the stainless steel spin basket will come out, you need to remove the six tub screws at the bottom using a 10 millimeter socket wrench. Each screw has a split locking washer and flat washer on it. Again, you'll notice there's some thread locking material on them, so don't wipe it off. Now you can lift out the spin basket, but you might want to help her. It's awkward, weighs about 25 pounds, and as you're removing it, uh, you'll also hear some liquid sloshing around, which is in the plastic balance ring around the top. It's supposed to help keep the tub balanced at high spin speeds. Outside of my tub looks pretty dingy, but I have been holding off on the tub clean cycle in preparation for making this video, so I actually thought it would be worse. But <laughs> that's a pretty solid ring. To clean the outside of the tub, I used a microfiber cloth and a steam cleaner. However, the steam cleaner didn't work as well as I thought it would. The residue was pretty stubborn, and it took a lot of elbow grease. I also tried a magic eraser, not a brace of sponge, and even a dryer sheet, but they didn't work well. In hindsight, maybe a water white vinegar solution with some baking soda added would have worked better, or even a tub and shower cleaner. Whatever the product, though, um, that you choose, make sure it's safe for stainless steel. Once the stainless tub sparkles, clean the tub liner. The steam cleaner worked better for this, and it even removed some of the rust spots embedded into the plastic near the drain outlet, and I'm not sure where that rust came from. Maybe it's possible it was from a piece of pirate left in the pocket of my kid's sweatshirt. It exploded in the wash. It was a mess. Now, if your inner hub is as tarnished as mine, there isn't much to do about it other than wipe it with a soft cloth. If you've ever put galvanized metal into white vinegar, this is what it looks like. And I used, vinegar, I used to use vinegar for the tub clean. It may also be corrosion caused by bleach, since this is where it ends up when you put it into the blue cup at the top. And finally, while you're under the hood, might as well clean around the rim of the outer tub and wipe away anything else that looks dirty. And just a side note, if your machine needs new suspension rods and shock absorbers, this would be a great time to install them, since you won't have the weight of the spin basket in there. Look for my other video on how to do that. <laughs> now to reassemble this bugger. Before lifting the tub, if you OCD'd with me, take note of where the pencil marks or the painter's tape is on both the hub and the stainless steel spin basket. And if you didn't OCD, don't worry, just line up the holes in the tub with the nubs on the hub. <laughs> Say that a couple times fast. And then you want to place the basket back in, and if the six screw holes in the bottom of the tub line up with the holes in the hub, you did it correctly. Get the six tub screws started by hand, and then use the 10 millimeter socket wrench to go around and tighten them gradually. You can also alternate opposite sides, um, but I just go around gradually, tighten each one a little at a time until they're all nice and tight. You just don't want to fully tighten one screw, then move on to the adjacent one. The tub may not get properly seated that way. Next, put the wash plate back on the shaft and just make sure it's seated all the way down. Next is the wash plate screw with the teeth lock washer and O-ring on it. Start it by hand and then tighten it with the 10 millimeter socket wrench. Replace the wash plate pulsator cap by lining up the clips with the holes and push down. Grab the tub cover, check that the half gasket is seated properly, position it on the tub so the eight clasps line up, and then snap them onto the outer tub. Unhook the bungee cord, get it out of the way. Resecure the painter's tape, and then while holding the cover from underneath to keep it stabilized, untwist the two wire hinges and push them out just a little bit. Then lower the cover back down into position.
Walk around to the back of the machine, remove the two wires that were used as hinges, grasp the cover on the sides, lift slightly, and slide it forward until it drops. Then pull it back, and you may have to shimmy it a little as you pull, but once it's in position and you can get your fingers out of the way, it'll snap in. Then check your work, making sure it's even on all sides and that the teeth of the cover made it back under the bar in the front of the cabinet. Replace the two Phillips head screws in the back under the control panel. Now it's time to reconnect the water supply lines. However, I recommend doing a few maintenance tasks beforehand. First, remove the plugs from the hot and cold water intakes and use a cotton swab to clean off the screens inside. It's a good thing to do if you're experiencing slow or low flow. Then grab a bucket, insert the ends of your supply hoses in it, and turn on the water to flush any debris stuck in the lines. Once that's done, you can reconnect the supply lines and you only want to tighten them by hand, no tools. If the ends of the lines don't screw on easily, take them off and start again. If you force them uh, to screw on, it can mess up the plastic threads and it'll cause leaks. I always hand tighten first and then use adjustable pliers to give them maybe another eighth of a turn, no more than that. Turn the water back on and check for leaks. If you haven't done so yet, position the machine back into its operating position, uh, and then you should check that the machine is balanced front to back and side to side. I'll post another video on properly leveling soon. Our basement floor isn't flat, so I had to adjust the leveling legs. Reconnect the drain hose, make sure the water supply is turned on, and then you can plug the machine back in. Now the last thing I recommend doing before you dive into that stack of laundry that's been accumulating is to run a test cycle by pressing the power button and immediately pressing the soil and spin buttons at the same time. Then press play pause to start. Once the test cycle is complete and everything looks good, you can get back to doing the laundry. If you watch my test cycle all the way through, you're going to hear what a laboring drain pump sounds like. Yep, my daughter's pyrite messed it up. So that'll be my next video. I hope this information has been helpful. Like, subscribe, and please super thanks so I can keep making these videos for you. And big shout out to my previous super thanks patrons, Harrison, Lisa, Vikas. I really appreciate your generosity. Thank you so much. See you soon, laundry friends.
Sounds like a problem with the drain pump. Workshop dance party. Did you hit that subscribe button? Turn on the notifications bell? Of course you have, because you know that I try not to leave my subscribers hanging. If I've reviewed a product and subsequently had an issue with it, you know I'll try to post a follow-up with some solutions or at least give you some troubleshooting tips. All right, until next time.